Thank you very much, General. Thanks for being with us today. I want to just emphasize a point that Senator Hirono made, and I know you're not uh, in the diplomatic business, but in many ways you are. Uh, helping to foster the relationship between Japan and South Korea, I think, is an important part of, of anybody's job that has a responsibility in, 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 in Korea. Uh, that relationship seems to be two, one step forward and two steps back in recent years. And uh, I hope that that's something that you will work with your State Department counterparts and your military counterparts in both countries, because I think that's a very important part of, of our strategic position and deterrent uh, in the region. Do you agree? Oh, yes, Senator, I do. Uh, I, I hope that that's uh, something that, that you can continue. Uh, the other point that I think is important is that we always talk about North Korea in terms of nuclear weapons. That's the popular discussion here in the U.S. And by popular, I don't mean approved of. I mean common in the, in the, in the press. I was surprised, to some, to some extent shocked, driving from Seoul to the DMZ, uh, how close it is. And uh, one of the concerns is that it would not take nuclear weapons or even missiles to inflict enormous damage on Seoul from the North Korean border. And I understand there are artillery batteries that are poised to do just that. Uh, talk to me about the conventional threat, particularly to the city of Seoul, uh, that I think uh, we, should, we should realize that this isn't only a, a nuclear issue, but there are some 25 or 30 million people at risk from conventional uh, attack that could be uh, triggered at a moment's notice. Uh, yes, Senator. And, and I'm very well aware of that threat. Um, as a major, I was stationed along the, the demilitarized zone uh, within mortar range um, and artillery range, and it was something that, uh, that uh, I wouldn't say it kept me up at night, but uh, um, what was a concern. And as you stated, the conventional threat and their ability to put um, uh, many rounds in the air and, and, and create um, uh, panic uh, just in the conventional side is, is, is concerning. And as you stated, um, it appears that Seoul is gr growing to the north um, even closer. Uh, thank you. One of the things that concerns me, particularly in a place like uh, North, uh, South Korea or the South China Sea or Taiwan or uh, Ukraine, is the risk of accidental war, of a conflict which escalates uh, out of control in, in a hurry. Uh, one way to uh, try to ameliorate that risk is uh, connections and, and uh, communication links between uh, potential adversaries. Do we have mill-to-mill -mill contacts with uh, the North Koreans uh, in order to be able to discuss something which may be an accident, an unintended uh, low-level conflict so that it doesn't uh, uh, spin out of control? Uh, Senator, I'm not aware of the exact um, reduction. I do know that the joint security area up at Panmunjom is, is one way of, um, of, of communicating, uh, but I'm not uh, fully aware of all the capabilities, the communication links. I would hope that that would be something you could look into and, of course, talk to the State Department because if you look back through history, uh, wars often start by accident. The guns of August. Uh, nobody thought that a single gunshot in Sarajevo was going to plunge the world into the conflict that it did in World War I. So one way to, as I say, to ameliorate or mitigate that is having a pre-existing uh, contacts, particularly on the mill-to-mill level where you can say, hey, that was not an intentional incursion uh, or uh, that incident was uh, a rogue uh, individual. I, I hope that that's something you might uh, uh, consider because you are going to one of the world's tinderboxes. Yes, Senator, I will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.